Oh, well, hello there. Right, well, it's me again, Nadine, from Heartsease Cakes, but as you can tell, we're not in the cake studio today. In actual fact, we're on a little field trip. We've come to a very lovely microbrewery, not too far from our cake studio, run by a very dear friend of mine, Paul. And Paul is here with us today, and very kindly, he's going to show us round. Now, the whole point of this is, he's also going to give me some of his lovely bottles of ale here to take home. Not for me to drink, but so that Andrew can turn them into beautiful cakes using these ales. And they're going to be available on the 9th of February at his wedding fair that you're hosting here. Uh, and everybody that comes will be able to try them. So if you have a wedding here, you can have your wedding cake using the ales. So you can eat and drink the ales. That's pretty cool. So, Paul, thank you very much for having us. Welcome to Elsa Brewery. Fabulous, fabulous shop and all these lovely things. So you're going to take us around and show us how this all gets made, yes? Yeah, so we started with the finished product, but we'll have a quick look at the brewery, see yeah. how the ingredients relate to the process, how we make the beer. Then we'll have a look at the bottling room and see how it gets from being in a cast to being in a bottle. And then we'll uh, go down to the bar and uh, see the finished product. Fantastic. And it's in the barn that we're going to have then the yep. wedding fair. It is indeed. Fantastic. Well, there we go. Let's go and find out how it all happens so I can take the products home for Andrew so he can start some baking. So let's go have a look, shall we? Let's have a look. Right. Well, okay. So here we are. We've had a lovely look at what's in the shop. Now we've got to find out how to make it. Mm -hmm. So this is where it all happens, I take it, the nerve centre. It is indeed. This is our, our brew house, uh, small but perfectly formed. And beautiful aroma in here, I've got to say. <laughs> yeah, you can smell the, the dry hops and the Oh, yeast. yeah, yeah. So, what, what is it made from and what do we need all these great big tanks for? So, start of the process is here. This is our hot liquor tank. Whenever brewing um, uses water, that water gets referred to as liquor. And all of our water comes from our own borehole. So it's 60 meters into the side of the hill, mineral rich, hard water and pure. So it doesn't have all the chlorines and things that you would from a main, uh, mains water supply. So it starts off with our hot liquor tank. You then, um, this is your mash tun, this is where you add your grains. So yeah. we use grains like this one, a pale malt. Um, that'll give you flavors of biscuit, um, bread, toast. Ooh. All the way to your kind of chocolate, smoky, um, yeah, really, really roasted notes in there. So in here, uh, we'll use on average 250 kilos worth of grain or 10 very heavy sacks. Yeah. We'll mix that with the hot liquor and leave that for an hour. And what that does is all the sugars, starches, proteins from the grain get released into that liquid, which comes this beautiful sugary molasses type flavour. Mm. Um, we then need to transfer out of our mash tun into our kettle. Yeah. Kettle does exactly what it says in the tin. That's where we boil it up um, using the hops. So whereas the grain will give you the sugars and flavors of biscuit, caramel, toffee, roasted, the hops give you the bitterness, flavors, and aromas like spicy, earthy, fruity. And just like a tea bag, the longer they're boiled for, the more bitterness the less time they're in contact with the water, it's more for flavour and aroma, so. Ah, just like tea then. Just, exactly, just like tea. Hmm. So when it's been in there for an hour, uh, we then need to transfer into our lovely shine fermentation tanks. Yeah. So we pump it through our heat exchange. So cold water on one side, hot water, or the hot wort as it's called, that beery liquid, um, goes the other way. The cold water takes that heat out and goes back into our hot liquor tank so you don't waste any of that energy. And what was boiling goes into our fermentation tanks at about 20 degrees. That is where we add our yeast um, and they're brilliant fermentation tanks. They've got big cooling jackets on so the fermentation control is consistent. Yeah. So we use exactly the same water, exactly the same grain, exactly the same hops, exactly the same fermentation temperature. So we're as near as damn as we can be to a really consistent and quality beer, having big brewery facilities whilst being a small artist and producer. Fantastic. So where does it go from here? So I'll we'll spend a week in the fermentation tanks, uh, fermenting that um, sugar from the grain and turning it into alcohol. 
will then do what's known as racking, where you effectively take out the fermentation tank and fill the casks with the beer, and then that will either go off to the pubs or it'll go to be bottled, which I believe we're going to go and have a look at in here. Excellent. So I'm going to see all the big shiny production line where you press a button and it, <laughs> it rolls through. Slightly more manual than that automated uh, process. The but personal touch then. Yeah, yeah. Made Excellent. with love. Made right. with love. That's what we like to hear. Right. So let's go and see it get bottled up then, shall we? Let's go. Fantastic. Thank you. This is brilliant. <laughs> Here we are, Paul. We've seen it all doing its thing in there. So now, where do we go from here? So what we do is we do what's known as racking. So all that is, is getting the beer out of the fermentation tank into one of our casks. When it comes in here, we all of our beers are bottle conditioned. So what that means, we put a bit of a sugar solution in there and give it a real good mix. And what that does is when it spends a week in the warm room here in the bottle, It'll go through secondary fermentation, the yeast will gobble up that sugar, naturally carbonate it, so you get a much more flavoursome beer, um, all the health benefits of beer, um, and that's just our kind of way that we do it. So, so drinking your beer is healthy living. It is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like it. It's working for me so far. So, that's fine. <laughs> um, I'm sticking by that. So you get the sugar in there, you give it a real good mix, you then knock it up in the front and attach our very high-tech bottling machine. Um, so we get our bottle, you rest it on there and that naturally fills up to 500ml, just four bottles at a time. So you take those four bottles off, then have a cap in a sterling solution, you take that, put it in the top there, individually cap them, then put them onto our labelling machine, you individually label them and then individually batch and date them. Then they'll spend a week in the warm room going through their secondary fermentation. We'll then put them in our chill room for a week to allow those flavours to mature and to drop any sediment to the bottom of the bottle. Perfectly okay to drink, um, but sometimes can make it slightly cloudy. And then we uh, have that awful job of tasting it for quality and consistency. So you've got as bad a job as us then, really. It's a hard life. I bet you get a lot of volunteers, though, to help. Yeah, there's, there's never a shortage of uh, <laughs> beer tasters. <laughs> but then I understand, and I'm, I don't want to give anything away, but one of your beers, it was when you were doing your taste testing, is where you came up with its name, didn't you? It did indeed, yeah. Yeah, so, so we'll save that one, because that'll be something for our visitors to uh, find out when they come and, and taste everything on the 9th of February. Cool. Well. Fantastic. So, from here now, it's all labelled, and of course we've got to take it now to the barn where we're going to be uh, having the wedding fair. Excellent. Fantastic. I think that's a much easier way to carry it home. I was just figuring out how I was going to take that, you know, half a dozen of those was going to be a bit heavy to carry. 50 kilos of heavy lifting, that is. Yeah, I can think of several people back home will help me with that one. Now. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Let's go to the barn then. Well, let's go. Great. Well, here we are, Paul, back in the barn now, as it were, although well, hardly prepared to call it a barn as such. <laughs> um, and lots and lots of ales for me. Yeah. So it's been fabulous seeing how you make it all. Um, and I'm really looking forward to taking all of these ales home. I'm not drinking them myself, it must be said. They're going to go to Andrew, and he's going to turn them into cake, which should be really interesting. Should be really good. Well, we're giving you a range there from, from light to dark. So starting with the pinnacle uh, and the lighter beers will give you kind of more of a citrus, a herbal, floral kind of notes, um, biscuit. And then the further you use the roasted malts towards like the legless cow and the summit, you get more caramelly toffee notes. And then with the really dark ones like the, the over the hill and the seven surge, you've got those roasted malts, so you've got the coffee, chocolate notes, which will go perfectly in the cake, so it'll be interesting to see what, um, what you come up with. Well, talking about coming up with them, of course, we'll be here on the 9th of February for your wedding fair, which yep. will be lovely, and we'll have the stand, and Andrew will be doing his sugar craft live, but up on the balcony up there, you're going to have our cakes for people to be able to enjoy. Yep. So, uh, when, they've, when they've stressed out with all of their lookings for weddings, they can go up there and have a bit of chill time and enjoy. Cup of tea and cake. What's more? Nothing better is there. Exactly. The best there is. So, I will uh, just take your ales and uh, head off. 
And thanks for having us this morning. Thanks for coming. And uh, we'll be back with the camera, let you all find out, because we're going to record what people have to say about our cakes and, and in turn, therefore, his ale. So it's time for me to say goodbye now and uh, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>